Hey guys, it's Space Sims, and we are back with more Radiant Tale, continuing Zephora's route. And I think, yeah, we can skip because this is our last show. Here we go. Hands in, guys. We can do it. Anyway, so now we're having flashback memories. Birds with me. In case you hear random chattering. I'm going to assume it's you have to smile first again. Yeah, okay. It's always you have to smile first. I wonder when we say you have to work harder. I'm going to guess it's I can't choose again. Yep, I can't choose. I'm just going to say because everything so far has been the same thing. You know what I mean? Like we've never... Why aren't you listening? Yes. It, oh, it's always the same, guys. It's yet to be different, so... Maybe Radies is different. Maybe his is different. Because, like, again, I think Vilio's got his own separate comment route. Wow, did my computer just get, like, fucking loud? Or was that just... There's the prince crying, and now we're going to the castle, and now we're finding out that we've got to go away. And I, I can't lean over because I'm a bird. He gets fidgety. He was very sad because I was... Oh, I left him behind. Yay! Look, we're in Sephora's route, guys! I can't believe it! We did it! Ooh, now we get to be Zephora. Ooh! Have we gotten to be Zephora before? I don't know if we've gotten... Have we gotten thoughts in his head? I think we only do that usually when we're, like, in their route, so... Zephora, I want to talk about your request to dismiss Balto from his sentinel position. Hence, I asked you to remain. I've confirmed with my own eyes the petition full of citizen signatures and the details leading up to the dismissal request. I think Vigonia paused for a moment, fixing me with a keen gaze. I have approved your application, thus Balto shall be dismissed. I was like, you can't sit here and be like, you know, I'm not going to do it, because, like, there is no reason for that. You're not a bad king. You're a good king. And Zephora... I hereby appoint you as the next Labyrinth Sentinel. <laughs> Why do I feel so happy for this? He's going to leave us, though. Does that mean we'll never get... You never... Okay, never mind. I was going to be like, does that mean we'll never get to see him in his clown get up again? And it's like, yeah, we will. Because, like, role-playing in the bedroom. It's fine. Sweetie! Sweetie! I'm thinking that maybe you should uh put on that clown co You know, Zephora would be the one, like, thinking I'm going to put on the clown costume tonight. Ah! Is it my birthday? <laughs> Wait, we're not getting divorced, are we? Okay, it's a good thing. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Special treat when you put that on. Oh dear God. Yes, sire. Despite my nerves, I managed to wring a reply out of my dry throat. I clenched my fist to hide my fingers, which trembled with joy. I made it. Finally. Unfortunately, as for your other submission, I'm afraid it'll be difficult to arrest him on suspicion of causing the lunatic riots. However, should you become the sentinel and bring us the mir maracas as evidence, we should be able to charge him. After your show, the number of fiends around Kultura decreased for some time. But they're crawling out of the woodwork again, and things are getting worse by the day. We cannot overlook this. We need to resolve it as soon as possible for our citizens. However, I fear simply exterminating the fiends doesn't strike at the root of this problem. Alas, can we romance him in the fan disc? Because I hope we can. Listen. Listen, every once in a while, I get thirsty for a side character looking at Oliver from Pio Fiore, like best fucking side character ever. We'll always love him. I will always love you, Oliver. Jesus. You're the reason I went to the Visconti. I like Gil and all, don't get me wrong, but like Oliver, I went for Gil because he's kind of cool, but I stayed for you, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but like... Or, you know, the side characters, they don't let you date because they're like, no, he's your brother. I don't care, games. We have under we understand. I don't care. Give me. But, like, in this one, we got Jinnia. We got fucking Leon. You got fucking Aless. There's way too many tasty side pieces that I don't get to enjoy. So I'm going to need a fan disc where I can enjoy all of them and really grow my fucking man harem. Because, like, this is the most man harem game with all the side, like, that I want a piece, like, all the side characters I want a piece of, I can't even communicate. I'm just saying, so. For that reason, I determined that a new ruler and drastic reform measures are necessary. The citizens of Kultura love you and Ginia, thanks hi- and, oh. 
I was like, culture, I love you and Ginny. And I'm like, well, you're not appointing us as co-fucking sentinels, are you? No, God, I read that wrong. The citizens of Cultura love you, and Ginia thinks highly of your skills. I believe I can trust you to take up the mantle of this position. I leave Cultura in your capable hands, Zephora. Bird, again, you can't shove yourself so far into my chin I can't move. Of course, sire. Back to us. Uh, maybe. Uh, Sephora emerged from the hall with a sigh. Our sexy labyrinth sentinel future husband. I love it. Good going, Sephora! Filio rushed over to congratulate him first. The others followed behind him. When we were ordered to go on another trip, I was wondering whether they would approve your request. And now that we've submitted the petition and you've been appointed the next labyrinth sentinel... But we can breathe a bit easier. Man, can't wait to boost Bo boot Bolto out of his sentinel job. It's boot. Smell the candles. I just, okay, anyway, sorry. You've all been eavesdropping. Seriously, get a hobby. Shrugging, Zephora rolled his eyes. For the record, I only brought them here because they kept pestering me. That's great news, though. Everyone in Kultura can have peace of mind now. There are a lot of things I gotta deal with, though. Ugh. Getting a headache just thinking about it. Inside, he's like, <laughs> Gotta play it cool. <laughs> but, well, I've finally reached the starting point. Yeah! We all hug him. Everybody hug him. Just when I was wondering who was making a racket in the hallway, you miscreants dare to eavesdrop on royalty. Oh my... Sorry for being so nosy, Allie. We're just worried about Sephora. Are you really going to trifle with our feelings? Like I'd show you mercy for that. Regardless of the circumstances, eavesdropping on the king is prohibited. Ugh. Can't believe I have to entrust his highness to the likes of you. Please let me wake up from this nightmare. I really kind of want Jinnia and Aleste to get married. I just want to... Okay. This is a man sandwich I want to be in the middle of. They're fucking banter and bicker and back and forth. It's like, look at my boy, look at my boys, my little husbands. They're in love with. We're a thruple here, and I just, I love it. The man harem's gonna just be so fun with both of them. Looking dejected, Aleste adjusted his glasses. If I start complaining, there'll be no end to it. Anyway, follow me. I'll introduce you to His Highness. We haven't, we didn't meet his, the prince. Didn't. I don't know, we get the, I'm like, this is exactly what we did in, like, I don't remember doing this in Pashalia, but I remember doing this in Ion. Huh, anyway. Aless led us to another room in the castle and told us to wait for a while. Eventually, the young man of the hour arrived. Maybe we did, because maybe Pashalia talked to him and then it's like, okay. Hello, I'm Calivis. Nice to meet you. The prince stuttered as he introduced himself, and his eyes wandering around the room. What are you so scared of? No need to be so nervous, buddy. I won't eat you. Filio approached him with long strides and gave him a firm handshake. Nice to meet you, Calivis. His smile was as bright as the sun. Um, I... Calivis was frozen stiff as he stared at their clasped hands, not knowing how to respond. Did you hear the fucking whistle in the background? Did you just fucking blow a whistle, Aleste? Inappropriate touching! Hold it, you dullard! You'll address him as your highness. I will permit your casual attitude, but you must call him by his title. <laughs> it's just a sound effect, but I just imagine fucking Aleste is like a goddamn... Butt. Like, Aleste, you don't need a rape whistle, sweetie. That's not... Like, put it away. Now repeat after me, your highness. Where did that whistle come from? He does have one. That's amazing. I love it. Filio dropped Calivis's hand at the harsh shriek of the whistle. He cocked his head to one side, brows raised. Your highness? Hmm. Just feels all wrong on my tongue. N no need to call me by title. 
but we'll be traveling together after all. But they will ne- And the ga- the gall! His Highness has given his permission, yet you dare go against him, Allie! In the end, your art and love and devotion is just your ego manifesting your ideals. Just my ego? Ugh. Indeed. There's not I can do if that's your will, your highness. Wow, Ginny is an expert Aleste handler. <laughs> that's why I love them. I want to spin off Buddy Cop. I also kind of want to spin off Buddy Cop game of like fucking Vilio and Zephora. Because like, it's two different awkward dynamics. Pashalia and Ion sure could be like a spit, but like, it would have to be Pashalia, Ion, and Rady. But like, they're they're they get along with everyone. There's no at odds there. You know what I mean? They're little odd couples, but it's not like oh my god, one of them's gonna kill like or like Zephora and Vilio. Zephora's gonna kill Vilio. Aleste might kill Jinnia. Like Ion, Pashalia, and Rady. Eh. Like, Rady would be the one for laughs. He'd be getting drunk all the time, and they'd be like, gosh darn it, he's making a mess. But, like, you know, they'd still love him anyway, and they'd just be exasperated with him, but it wouldn't be the drama. You know, the fun drama that we'd have with the four of Ilio. Zavilio. <laughs> and Janest. <laughs> Listen, just saying. Anyway. So not only can we talk to him on a friendly basis, but we can even drop the title, huh? And fixating on his royal... Wait. Fixating on his royal address would only put distance between us, yeah. By your will. It's wonderful to meet you, Calivus. Let me say it again, too. Nice to meet you, Calivus. Nice to meet you, too. Alest wore a complex look on his face as he eyed our handshakes. Ahem. I'd like to move on to your upcoming schedule. His not-so-smooth effort to change tack was admirable. I feel like holding a show in our theater is a good start, since we're most familiar with this city. The venue will be the plaza, and as for the mystic tools, I'll briefly explain how to rent them after this. I've also chosen several places to put up the promotional posters, but take a look later. We exchanged wide-eyed glances after hearing a less rundown. Since when did we fucking invite you into this? I never realized that he has a fucking barrette in his hair. I just so noticed this now. We're three routes in. I just saw the little clip in the fucking... His right, our left. Oh my god. I love it. Sweetie, I love you. You get more fabulous. I'm also kind of curious. I mean, I've seen, like, the little, like, tattoo or, mar or whatever on the side of his face. But, like, I'm kind of curious as to what's the deal with that. Because it's not, like... You were just fabulous, and that's your makeup. Like, there's something. Like, what is it? What's the deal? What's going on there? You know what I mean? And actually, it kind of almost looks like he's... Well, no, it's only on his... Our left. His right. Because I think the other side is just the sh is like a piece of hair by his glasses. I mean, that I've seen. But, like, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, but why? What's the deal with that? You're, you got something going on. Come on, tell me. But, like... Is he contracted with spirits? Is that, like, a thing? Like, from them, maybe? You know, like, Pashalia, like, ended up with blue hair? Anyway, I just noticed his barrette. That's the whole point of this. We exchanged wide-eyed glances after hearing Aleste's rundown. You already prepared all that? Wow. You're so fast. Can we exchange Ginia for Aleste? But what about me? Think about my feelings. I am uncertain of the castle's future should Ginia be appointed to a less position. <laughs> I love Ginia, but I also love how everybody, like, just calls him out for being useless. But he's pretty. Look, everybody, every group needs a tuxedo mask, okay? It too, Ion! Ginia aside, how about you, Zephora? What's your plan? Freddy's question made my heart pound. Once Balto's dismissed for good, you have to return to Kultura as the new Labyrinth Sentinel, right? Oh, well, we're obliged to help the prince, no, prince grow. A Sentinel ain't a job just anybody can pick up. Just when I thought I could travel with Sephora and the others again, loneliness washed over me. Nope. It'll take some time until he's dismissed for good. 
I don't need to head back to Kultura right away. Aleste informed us that he himself had to go to Kultura to take care of the matter. Once there, he'd notify Balto of his discharge directly. He'd also ask the older man to return the labyrinth necklace. Preparation for Zephora's inauguration could only begin once Aleste brought the item back to the capital. On that note, I'll help you until everything's set. Really? So you can stay longer? I literally just said that. Why are you so happy about it? Look, look at the look on his face! Why are you so happy about it? But he's like, why are you so happy about it? He's giving us that look like, why are you happy about it? Because it's making me happy that you're happy, and I hope it's because you're in love with me, because I'm kind of in love with you, and you being happy about me staying because you're in love with me makes me happy, you know, because I want you to be happy, because I'm happy, because I love you. <laughs> like, it's adorable. Stop it. Zephora laughed teasingly, and I smiled so wide my cheeks hurt. I think I can probably stay until the Arthur show, but after that, you have to go on without me. That means this show will mark both Calivus's debut and our last show altogether. We need to be more focused than usual and deliver an exceptional show. But this will be Zephora's last show with us. I'd already prepared for our disbandment after the last show, but I can't help feeling a little sad about it. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned about the fiends around Kultura, though. There are more of them again. The fiends are said to be the embodiment of negative emotions. That means the city is still unsettled. Well, that's because Balto's the cause of it all. I'm happy Zephora still gets to be with us, but prolonging his stay will do no good for Kultura. Everyone's right. I was elated that Zephora got to stay with us a bit longer. However, he had to return to Kultura as soon as, pos as, soon as possible. As soon as possible! What the hell was happening there? I don't know. Hey now, I turn those frowns upside down. It's not like the fiends will pop up in town right away just because they're multiplying, okay? He's right. I'll increase the public security forces as a countermeasure, so there's no need to worry. Plus, we managed to change the citizens' attitudes with our show. And changing people's mindsets hardly easy. We'll have to drag Balto down before it's too late. For now, we just need to do what we can. Yeah, agreed. Ilio's expression softened. Um, what was that about Kultura? Levis, who'd been silent the whole time, piped up in a tiny voice. The voyager said something about the Labyrinth just now, I think. The Labyrinth Sentinel is Kultura's ruler, right? You're correct. Zephora is heir to the title. Born as the son of a Labyrinth Sentinel, Zephora was raised to be his father's successor. Deceived by his uncle, Balto, he was exiled from Kultura following his parents' murder. Ginia might be telling the story, but I'm just going to read it like this, because I don't know. Kultura, the city of Harmony, was founded by the great spirit of wind, Libra. Its citizens proudly supported one another. Balto, however, was a dictator who did not deign to listen to anyone. Using followers called Mara Flowers, not followers, using flowers called Maracas, which were managed by the Sentinels, he drove people mad and sparked the lunatic riots. Terrified, the citizens of Kultura had no choice but to obey their new lord. The city of Harmony was no more. In order to restore Kultura to its former glory, Zephora joined Circus. When we were in Kultura, we lifted their spirits with our performance. Because of that, the citizens there decided to revolt against Balto. We gathered their signatures to dismiss him, dismiss him, petitioned his majesty to make me the next sentinel. He approved it just now. I had no idea. You've been locked in your teeny tiny child body for like a decade, kid. Don't worry about it. Olivis kept his eyes fixed on Zephora once he understood the whole situation. What do you want? He frowned, perhaps feeling uncomfortable, pinned beneath the prince's stare. He Um, well... Zephora, don't scare his highness with your chilly attitude. I'm acting the same as always. It's all right, Calivus. Zephora might be a rude, jaded, and unfriendly fella, but he's actually a surprisingly good guy. Is that a compliment or an insult? The complisult. Scared as he was, Calivus opened up, little by little. I, I was just thinking how awesome you were since, um, the people love you so much. 
I know you can strip a sentinel's title with a petition and an official's referral, but no one has ever done it before. So yeah, you're really amazing, Zephora. Lots of people admire and acknowledge you. Uh, Calimus must have learned about Labyrinth Sentinels as part of his royal education. Maybe he was a bit late to think this, but it occurred to me then that the young boy before us would lead the country someday. I am also destined to lead people in the future. But all I've done so far is worry them. Zephora wore a bitter expression, looking as if he wanted to say something back. Whatever it was, he kept it to himself. True, you might have done nothing but worry him, so... It was Vilio who spoke up instead. Now that your frozen heart's melted, why don't you show him how healthy you've become? Sure, we can't change the past, but you're free to decide what you want to do from here on out. Not really. You're free to decide what you want to do, unless that's not rule the country. You have to do that. You don't, you don't have it. I want to be a baker. Too bad. You can bake on weekend when you're not doing king things, but uh, maybe. Probably not. But you. So, as long as what you want to do is be the motherfucking king, then you can do anything you want. Sort of. <laughs> what I want to do, huh? I hate to agree with this guy, but he has a point. I see. The little prince was still lacking some confidence, yet he seemed convinced by Zephora and Vilio's words. All right, darlings. We should discuss our plans for the upcoming show. Jinnia patted my shoulders when he said that. I'm counting on you, Miss Producer. How shall we go about that? W about this one? Hmm, let me think. Make Calivus the star, probably. Let's not burden Calivus. We should make Calivus the star, I'm assuming, because that's what we did all the, the last time, right? Yeah. How about we make Calivus the star and put on a show commemorating his recovery? Me? The star? Yep. I know you're probably anxious now, but I'm sure you'll gain some confidence if you succeed. Above all, everyone our, in our fear has been waiting for your recovery. I believe it's important to show them you're feeling much better. Plenty of your people want to see you looking well again. Can I really make it as the star, I wonder? Livis twiddled his thumbs, anxious about the sudden spotlight. You made them fuss over you in the first place, so isn't it your duty to show them you're in good shape now? My duty? You're right. I'll give it my best shot. That's it, your highness. You know, I can't blame Aleste for being like a little simp for the prince. He's adorable. I love this kid. I don't think I'm gonna be like an Aleste simp. Like, simmer down, Aleste. It's fine. But, like, you know, Aleste is like, he's a good kid. He really is a good kid. <laughs> like, I do love this sassy child. It's all set, then. For our upcoming show, we'll commemorate Prince Calivus's recovery. As for the program, is there something you want to do, Calivus? Now, what could I do? He mumbled, trying to think of something. While Vilio's performance is so powerful and exciting, I can't conjure up that much raw power. And I don't think I can do an elegant water performance like Pashalia did. Ion's martial arts performance was so cool, but I can't wield a weapon. Brady's cute dance doesn't suit me either. Bantering and entertaining the audience like Sephora is definitely out of the question. The fact that he can banter and entertain the audience without making everybody pissed at him is amazing. Hey! Doesn't his heart melt? Why is, he, why is he so down on himself? He's not down on himself. Prince is just an attentive and cautious person. Like... <laughs> why the hell did the prince stab someone? He didn't stab them. He gently nudged them with a knife that went through their heart. <laughs> He's gently nudging their liver. Like, I feel like Aleste would try to turn everything the prince did into something positive. Oh, you certainly could spin it in such a positive way. <laughs> Since this is still our first show, I guess we can take our time to think about it. You don't have to come up with an answer right away. How about you spend a few days with our members first? See and try new things before you decide what to do. Yeah, I'd like that. Livis gave me a small nod. Are you fine with that, guys? Everyone but Sephora nodded. 
while I can participate in the show. I got a, I got a lot of Cultura stuff to take care of. I can accompany him for a few hours, but definitely not the whole day. Oh, okay. You're right. Oh, and one more thing. Don't get the wrong idea just because I look busy, all right? Got it. Thanks for letting me know. Basically, I'll be with Calivis the whole time so we can brainstorm. You guys can take turns chipping in. I can rest assured if His Highness is with you. I'll appoint a guard to follow you two at a distance. Thank you, Aleste. I hope we can figure this out together, Calivis. Yeah, I hope so too. I would have been lying if I said I didn't care about Sephora being busy. But I had to pull out all the stops to help Calivis, who was also doing his best. Since this will be both Calivis's recovery celebration and our last show together, I have to make it the best show ever. I'm gonna... Oh, sorry, my mouse. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm having issues over here. Sorry. Um, I'm gonna guess we go... Oh, wait, do we do everything? We... Can't do Zephora. <gasps> but it's Zephora's route! We go to Vilio. I guess we're gonna do everybody. Oh my god. Wait. No, where's my baby? It's okay, I like Vilio. We like everybody, but... Today, we spend some time practicing with Vilio. We went to a meadow on the city outskirts to show Calivis the redhead's, the redhead's dragon form. Wow. I was like, that confused me for a hot second. However, it ended up being a little too thrilling. Yeah, you liking it, Calivis? Feels so good to fly through the air, right? <coughs> Our original plan was only to show off his dragon form, but Vilio plopped the little prince on his back and took off. Oh god, he's literally being swung around in the air. Hang on tight. I'm gonna turn around. D turn around! That is not turning around. That's spinning. I am never, ever going to, ele to let Aleste hear about this. <laughs> I, I really thought I was gonna die up there. I am home, Mr. Ground. I love you so much. <laughs> Fucking funny. Calivis was completely worn out by the time he landed, collapsing almost immediately. Vilio, wasn't that a bit much? M my bad. I was feeling the wind and ended up going overboard. What if Calivis gets traumatized? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine. Riding a dragon was like a dream come true. Uh, then I guess it's okay? He was screaming the whole time when Vilio was doing all those loops and dives, though. Yep. I had a blast wondering whether the first King Arthur experienced the same thing. If Calivis said he was fine, then I figured there was no use fussing over it. You can ride me anytime if you want. Just let me know. Phrasing. I know what you mean, but good God, sir. Words. Watch them. Okay. So, did you decide what you want to do yet? I've always wanted to deliver an impressive performance with confidence, but... Really? That's a weird thing. I've always wanted to deliver an impressive performance with confidence. Has you Have you ever thought that? You ever been like, I would love to be on stage and just deliver an impressive performance? Like, I feel like that's very specific. That's a very odd thing for the prince to say. The confidence part again. I've always wanted to, like, get up in front of people and address them with confidence because, you know, you're a king, so you have to, like, do those things. But, like, this is a little oddly specific be in a circus troupe and want to, like, I, I just, okay. <laughs> I'm not a dragon. I can't even control my mana well. So no, I still don't know what I want to do. No, oh, all right. Just take your time, buddy. I have a lot of weaknesses too, and that's totally fine. Really? I always thought dragons could do anything. Nope. I tend to veer off and do my own thing and make lots of mistakes. At least he's self-aware. <laughs> Valid. It was really bad when I first met Specy. I was flying aimlessly around Arthur and crash landed right on top of her. <laughs> that was a real shock. I never imagined someone would fall down from the sky. What? Did you get hurt? No, nope. it was shocking, but I wasn't hurt or anything. Then, when we were rehearsing for our Arthur show, I created a whole fiasco and scared the crap out of the audience. 
And I made a lot of mistakes because I didn't know that I didn't know what was normal. Fortunately, my friends always guide me in the right direction whenever it happens. That's why I can do the things I want with all my heart. Even if you can't do it alone, as long as you have friends by your side, you can do all kinds of stuff. Vilio was like a goddamn fucking PBS special right now, but he ain't wrong. But like he is like every fucking like TV show, every PBS special, every fucking like after school fucking special from the 80s. Like, he is every moral of every story. Like, as long as you have friends by your side. Ding. Like, like the power of friendship. You can cure cancer. I mean, seriously. Seriously. You, you, <laughs> it's fucking absurd. I love it, though. I love it, but it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> if we all work together, we can do things that we can't, that can't be done alone. I mean, yes. Yeah. Huh? Wait a sec. Does that mean I've just been leeching off everybody's help this whole time? No, you're not. You help us out, too. You come up with these wise, wonderful things, and we're quite frankly surprised because you're kind of an idiot. Weird. You always encourage us whenever we, whenever we feel lost and struggle to take the next step. He does. It's all thanks to you that we have the confidence to move forward. Huh, really? Yeah, I don't entirely get what you're saying, but I'm happy you're complimenting me. That's why we love you. Because we're like, you always help us and you push us to succeed. And all the time he's like, I don't know the words that are coming out of your mouth because I'm kind of dumb, but okay. <laughs> this is why when he actually says wise things, it's like, where is this coming from? You know you don't understand 90% of what you're saying, but you just say it with such confidence and conviction and it's there and wholesome and from the heart and it's true, but goddamn, we're all shocked when it comes out of your mouth. I love him so much. Vilio shyly laughed at my praise. Look at him right now. Look at his adorable little face. I'm not sure if I want to ruffle his hair or slap him. I want to slap him because he's adorable and, like, stop looking so cute. You really are all friends. You're our friend too, Calivis. Let's compliment each other's strengths and weaknesses and turn them into mega super cool show. Turn them into A, sorry. Y yeah. Let's do a mega, mega super cool show. All right. How about we give some fire magic a try? Filio jumped to his feet and created a big flame around himself. Whoa! When you use magic, make sure to aim at the sky, okay? Or else you'll torch all this grass. Oh, right. I gotta be careful. That's our Spacey. Nice save. Do it right and I won't have to save anything. <laughs> Like, Billy is sitting there having wide words, and then he does dumb shit like that. God, I love him. I love our dumbass himbo. I'm going to go with Brady next, right? Because, yeah, he's right here. We're going to cheers. Are we going to teach Calivas how to do, like, shots? Thinking a simple dance would be doable for Calivas, we decided to do dance practice with Brady. Calivas had an excellent memory, and he had the cor and he had the choreography down in no time. This just might be it. Since he'd memorized it, we had him practice along with the music. Music, start! Oh my god, it gets so disjointing every time Rady's in hot guy form. Like, I, I mean, I know, I know, I know what to expect, but I don't. All of a sudden, it's like, what are you doing, sir? Stop being hot. I, I literally honestly expected Rady to be in furball form, and, like, this was, like, I can't process it right now. <laughs> His route is going to be a trip and a half. Oh, don't be so bummed. The Molly dance is just so superb that not anyone can easily follow along. Uh. After practice, we popped over to Cheers to relax. Acquiring a sense of rhythm in such a short time is hardly easy. Levis had no rhythm at all, it seemed. Despite having memorized the choreography, he moved out of sync just after the music started. Oh, come on, little man. Don't be so gloomy. Let's drink away all the horrible memories. He's seven, Rady. Rady, in his human form, patted Calivis on the back in an effort to cheer him up. The sun is still up. No alcohol. Yeah, all right. Hey, Leon, give me a coffee. Orange juice for this kid and what about you? A nice latte for me, please. Yeah, okay, so a coffee and orange juice and a nice latte filled to the brim with my undying love. 
Coming right up. <laughs> After his cheesy remark, Leon slipped into the back. I, this is why it's kind of sad that we can't date him ever. His undying... Like, come on. Listen, normally the guy throwing himself at me is like, oh, dear God, put it, put it away. But like you, no, I want it. You're not my... Like, not normally like... I, I don't want to say like I'm not normally a fan of whatever Leon's trying to serve me. It's not like, oh my god, like, Alesta, hi, you put glasses on him. Hi, sold. Done. Easy, right? Ginny, a goddamn fabulous. Also around me all the time and I can't date him. That seems like you cut the route for some fucking reason. Like, come on. Let's be real. Should have been a route for him. Not fair. He's basically a man. He's basically a side character in a main character route. Like, right? He acts like a main character. Looks like a main character, walks like a main character, talks like a main character, but you gave him, like, the side character treatment, and I don't appreciate that. However, anyway, Leon is like, I don't know, I just, you know what, I kind of do love you, so come on. Like, this... <coughs> I just choked on my own spit as I was trying to take a breath. Good God, I'm sorry. Um, I really do love this game, I don't think we need me to tell you that again, but in case you forgot in the last, like, 20 minutes, I fucking love this game. Undying love? Is that waiter in love with you or something, Spacey? Oh no, all women get to be on the receiving end of his charm. Yeah, uh, don't take it seriously. I just think of it like he's always making a sales pitch. Ah, uh, okay. I was kind of surprised since I've never seen someone like him at the castle. Well, it surprised me if there was a clown like him there. The merchants here are all like that. Their friendliness brings in more customers. I see. I never knew people in the castle versus the town spoke and acted so differently. Have you never met Jinnia before? It's like... I feel like when Rady's referring to Leon as like a clown, like, oh yeah, this goof, like this fucker over here. It's like, he's met Jinnia though, and Jinnia's kind of like... I'm sure Jinnia can be serious, but like, is also a goof. So like, Jinnia's kind of fighting that line. So I find it very impressive, and I'm very curious... And now I want that as, like, a side piece. I want to know what Ginny is like in the castle when he's not acting like his normal self. When he's putting on his professional airs over there. You're like, Ginny is in professional mode. What the fuck? You know? Me in professional... This is me in professional mode. I swear a little bit less at work, but I still am, like, I'm pretty much me. Like, I, this is pretty much me at work. I'm not sitting there, like, oogling over my fucking 2D boyfriends at work. No. But, like... Just generally, like, the sass. That's it. Which I find funny, because, like, when I started this channel, when I first started doing, like, my sim stuff, it was like, Hi, okay, so this is my channel, and I'm gonna be- I'm basically tour- I'm tour guide Spacey! But, like, a little less over the top with it. And it was so freaking weird. And eventually I was like, I'm just, like, whatever! What's up, bitches?! I mean, that's not how I go into work. I'm a little more professional. But, like, still, it's not like I am on calls speaking like this. Like, I'm, I'm going to present things like I have to about this. Here's the thing. But I'm going to be like, okay, I'm just telling you, this is not a smart idea. Like, I'm not going to be like, this is fucking stupid. But I'm thinking it. But I'm still not like, I just do not see the validity of this choice. Uh-uh. I'm like, no, this doesn't make any sense. I'm going to need you to spell it out for me why you think this makes sense. Because it's not making any damn sense. Like, you know, like... I mean, I guess I'm slightly more professional than I am here. But it's not much of a difference. It's not like where you see someone and you're like, Holy, wait. In, during the week, on the week, at what the fuck? Where it's so drastically different, you wouldn't recognize me? No. No. I feel like... I really hope no one that I work with ever finds out about this channel. Ever. I don't tell people. But, like, if they did, I, they'd be like, I'm somehow not surprised by the way you act on this. I'd be like, eh. no one would be surprised. That's what I'm saying. Anyway. So, I, this is my point. I really f doubt Jinnia is so much different. He might be slightly more professional. But I doubt it. I doubt it at all. So, like, you've never run into Jinnia where you don't, you've never recognized a goofball? Like, really? I just... Press X to doubt. Press A to continue the conversation. Anyway. Calivis' voice was rich with emotion as he muttered to himself, eyes darting around the pub. He 
came just we came just before dinner, so the place was packed with customers. I saw lovebirds, a group of men wearing the same work uniforms, and girlfriends who were on their way home. Regardless of age, occupation, or gender, we all enjoyed eating and chatting here. <laughs> this pub is so nice and lively. <laughs> I know, right? A splendid joint, wouldn't you say? Let me do something special just for you, since you're so kind. And I mean, also, Leon's just... Get him. He's cute as shit. And look at those sexy arm glove things. I mean, come on. Yeah, not normally my type, but also not not my type. You know? It's just this game. This game makes you kind of hot for everybody. I find it hard to believe you could be like, eh, I like this character, but not the other. How do you... I, you just not love every single one of them. How? I don't... Actually, I was going to say explain it to me, but don't. Because I want to stay here in my happy I love everybody bubble, and this is the best man harem ever. Leon materialized out of nowhere with our beverage orders and an ominous-looking drink for Calivis. That doesn't look like orange juice, son. Ta-da! This is my very own blend of mixed juice. Our Thera edition. Hold on. Wasn't this the one you usually drink when you lose some kind of game? What the hell are you trying to do to Calivis? Hmm? Calivis? Now where have I heard that name before? No way, are you the prince? Ah, oh, crap. The prince? For real? Hey, isn't that kid over there the- Isn't that kid over there Prince Calivis? You mean the one who just recovered? Wow, never thought I'd meet him here. Leon shouts and ripples through the people of the pub- People in the pub. First of all, it's not like he's an adult, but like he's a- He's a seven. So like, why would you give him like, weird fucked up juice to a child? Leon, Jesus. Now everyone's eyes were on Calivis. Um... The unexpected attention sent him into a fluster. Brady quickly got up from his seat to hide the prince from people's stares. My bad, but we came here incognito today. Can you leave us alone? I really hoped Leon would take the hint. He has a point, guys. If you make this much ruckus, his highness might not come back to town. I'd just chill and watch from afar. It just might do the trick. Well, I'll certainly be lonely if his highness stops coming here. And he just recovered from his illness, so we shouldn't make a fuss. Just like that, the customers resumed eating and drinking. But with a royal present, there was no way they could relax. Hey, can I eat this bread with my hands? You always do that, don't you? But I'm breathing the same air as his highness now. Should I be more mindful of my table manners? When you put it like that, you might be right. Everyone's having a good time, and now they're all restless as of me. Blaming himself for bringing the mood and the whole place down, Calivis stared at the floor. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change the fact that you're a prince, anyway. But don't you think you can change how this shakes out in the future? What do you mean, in the future? Well, how about... All right, Calivis. Take a sip of that juice Leon gave you and tell me how it tastes. What? Oh, that's me. What? The obscene concoction? Hey, I don't think this is a good that's fine come on that's not poisoned I'll go but down Calivis uh, okay well Ugh! does everyone in our theater happily drink this I can't believe my palate so different from theirs I need to study more everyone stared as Calivis seriously gave his comments with his lips puckered up in distaste <laughs> I didn't know his highness could make a face like that. We're with you, your highness. Leon's mixed juice tastes like sewage. The customers burst into laughter. The tension hanging over the pub had vanished. <laughs> My apologies. I know I'm being a bit disrespectful, your highness, but this is hilarious. It tasted so bad, didn't it? Do you want a macaron to clean your pa cleanse your palate? They're tasty and sweet. Th thank you. Oh, it really is. This tastes normal. Unable to stand it any longer, everyone began laughing all over again at Calivis' thoughts on the macaroon. Macaron, that's a macaron, not a macaroon. They're spelled different and they're different. Looking up at them, the young boy broke into a smile. <laughs> I think I get it now. Everyone's allowed to have fun, no matter whether you're a royal, a commoner, a human, or a fae. Christ, the music just like... My fucking volume went up, like, for some reason. Oh! 
Uh-huh. And you're already one step closer to him now that you've realized it. Yeah. I'll go practice one more time. Levis looked determined as if a weight had been lifted off his shoulders. I'm gonna guess we do Ion next, because, like, I mean, it's right where we are, so. Hi. Don't you keep the headset. It's not for you. And we're back down. Love you. Wait. What do you smell like? You smell like a bird. I'm a weirdo. I love the way you smell. Except for when you're wet. Wet bird smells disgusting. A dry bird. <laughs> you can't nibble on me like that. You're so cute. I know. It's getting dark up here. We'll take you downstairs after. Olivia's and I met up with Ion outside town to watch his martial arts performance. We were chatting on our way home. You were so cool, Ion. Your movements were so precise and stuff. I love how you could stand still even while you were swinging the spear around. Levis commented on Ion's performance with boyish excitement. I see. And did my performance help you in any way, though? I hope it did. No. Prince fell silent, glancing at the spear in Ion's hand. Oh, I know. Hey, Ion, can you let Calivis hold your spear for a minute? Calivis's eyes sparkled at my suggestion. <laughs> the prince really is young at heart. However, reality wasn't so kind. No, this spear is too big for you. You can get hurt if you're not careful. It would be a great tragedy if something happened to you, the sole heir to the throne. Ion flatly refused. Y you're right. I can't possibly carry such a cool weapon with my weak body. Levis hung his head, staring down at his tiny hands. I suppose... I suppose it would be alright if you held it for just a moment. <laughs> Ion won over by a sad child. Ion held it his spear to Calivis, probably feeling guilty at making the prince look so crestfallen. Are you sure? Yeah. I will catch you if you're about to lose your balance. Calivis reached for the spear, taking it into his hands. Whoa! It's so heavy! He staggered as if yanked around by the weapon. It looked really light when Ion held it. Seeing the weapon in their respective hands was like night and day. Whoops, are you alright? Ion caught Calivis quickly so that he wouldn't fall to the ground. Thank you. Never expected it to be this heavy. It looked really light when you held it, and I guess I'm not strong enough. Calivis was getting despondent again. Um, hey, how about we take a break? You two must be tired. Hello! Well, oh, it's you guys. All done with practice for the day. Yep, we're taking a break now. Okay, you can use the table at the back. Maybe I want to use the table in the front. Why well, we gotta go to the back? We made our way there and took a seat. And do you like sweets, Calivis? Ion's question came out of the blue. Um, yeah, I do. I see. With that curt reply, Ion headed to the kitchen. Shortly after, he returned carrying plates of dessert. You should eat sweets when you're tired. Ion placed the dessert in front of us. What is this? It's cherry... Clefotis? Clefotis? Whatever that is. A type of cake! A mixture of eggs, sugar, milk, fresh cream, flour, and fruits is put on top of tart a tart crust... With special butter poured on top. Special batter. Special batter. Okay. Guys. A type of cake. <laughs> a mixture of egg, sugar, milk, fresh cream, flour, and fruits is put on top of tart crust with a special batter poured on top. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. Made by Ion uses cherries, which add splashes of delectable red. The sour cherries and their sweet batter are, harmoni are a harmonious combination are a harmonious combination. I can't today. In both presentation and taste, nobody could ever find fault with his take on this dessert. I've never heard of this, but it sounds delicious. Whatever you say. <laughs> I don't know what it... I can't. You make this kind of cake here at Lieber? It looks tasty. No, this isn't on our menu. What? 
I borrowed Lieber's kitchen to make this. You went away for like five minutes. How'd you do that? You made this yourself, Ion? Levis's eyes flickered between Ion and the scrumptious looking Lefautus on his plate. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It sounds stupid. It sounds so wrong. This does not sound right. He was clearly blown away. <laughs> the other guys couldn't believe his skills at first either. Anyway, how about I get us some drinks? Wait right here. Here you go. Have some of this herbal tea. It was a new version of the herbal tea I made for Zephora the other day. I tried reducing the amount of herbs so even people unused to herbal teas could enjoy it. Thank you. Mmm, this tea's good. Levis altered between bites of clefoutis and sips of the tea, savoring the flavors. After some time, he put down his fork with a gloomy look on his face. Are you full already? That's not it. It's just... Daisy, you and I aren't so amazing. After all, look what you've made. And then there's me who can't do a thing. Well, you just kind of woke up from like a ten-year slumber, so it's kind of understandable. And that is not true. While I can cook and do martial arts, I cannot use magic at all. I am not as smart as Zephora, and I cannot bring everyone together like him. Same here. I can't deliver a flashy, skilled performance like the other members can. But that's exactly why I think of ways to make them shine on stage and convey our feelings to the audience. It's my job to help them. Everyone has their own unique, unique qualities. She's right. Each person has their own strengths and weaknesses. And there's something that only you can do, Colivis. You just have to discover what that is. Okay. I know it came out of nowhere. I'm tired and I'm hungry. There's something only I can do? I don't know if I can find it. You definitely will. The bird's getting feisty. Ion's heartfelt words appeared to encourage Colivis. He brightened up a little, picking up where he left off with the tea and dessert. I was hoping that scene was going to go on a little bit longer. It was like... Alright. Because I was like, if this goes on a little bit longer, then we can end there instead of... Alright, fine, we'll go with Bishalia. Alright. Here I go! Clivis held his hands up in the air, creating some bubbles. Nice, Clivis. That's it. Now let's try to make them star-shaped this time. Draw five points from there. Five points. Here we go! The young prince poured in more mana and the bubbles began to change shape. Change shape. But before long... <laughs> all the bubbles burst. Mm. He thought making star-shaped bubbles would be the easiest. But I guess it's still too early for him. How long did it take you, Pashalia? Oh, like two minutes. Around, er, like ten days, I think. Really? Oh, that's me. Really? His awkward pause piqued my curiosity, so I pressed him further. Around thirty minutes, actually. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be like ten days. And you're like, really? Okay, it was two minutes. Maybe I just have no aptitude for magic. You'll be fine. You just haven't gotten the hang of it yet. And again, I feel like somebody should be like, you have been frozen basically for 10 years. So like, yeah, it's going to take you a little bit more time. You're getting used to a lot of things in life. You're getting used to the world around you. You're getting used to being in your body and being awake and talking. But you're doing a lot of shit. So like you're taxing yourself. So it's okay if you don't get the hang of this as fast as other people. You'll be fine knows and maybe in the future you'll master master magic to the point that there's nothing left for me to assist you with will i though i want to encourage him too but i can't even use magic i tried to think of a way to cheer colivis up you say aren't you hungry what like what <laughs> i let out a funny noise at the sudden question she really did she said what what really what what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can have fun with this. My stomach is rumbling. Mine too. Now let's go buy some snacks. Michelia rubbed his stomach and looked around. Oh, hey, something over there smells great. Oh, let's go take a look. 
Oh, I'm sorry, you're again. We followed Pashali and spent some time walking around the plaza. I didn't know eggs were sold this way. So you don't buy them one by one, then? No, oh, so fish changes color once it's cooked? Wow! I didn't know raw fish looked like that. They never let you fit. You didn't have fish friends? It's com for us commoners, this stuff's pretty normal. There's nothing special about it. Levis is a prince, though. He's never seen these things before. Wait till he figures out how cakes are made. And he's like, wait, they're not just automatically there? <laughs> Seeing the boy peer at the shops with deep interest warmed my heart. I never knew we had a place like this near the castle. Oops, sorry, I got carried away. I should be more careful or else they'll find out I'm here and make a scene. His shoulders drooped as he turned to me. There's so many things I didn't know about this town. I don't know if I'm going to make it when we go to more faraway cities. Remind me a lot of myself back then. Huh? <laughs> oh, wait here, you two. Don't go anywhere. Here, take this. I highly recommend it. Michelle, I handed the little prince a freshly made crepe. Uh, what's this? It's called a crepe. You've never tried it? I feel like the palace chef served me something similar before. Liva simply stared at the crate Pashalia gave him. His brows raised. So, oh, um, how do we eat it? Do we use a spoon, or... I just hold it with your hand and munch on it. Munch on it? Livis waffled for a bit before finally taking a bite of his sweet treat. Hmm, so good. It's my first time eating outside and eating with my hands. It's strange because I know I'll get scolded for my bad manners. But this is so yummy. There's certain food you just should not be eating with a fork and a knife, okay? It's just weird. I'm really naive, aren't I? Yeah, me too. But aren't you having a fun... Er <clears throat> but aren't you having fun experiencing all these new things? I was just like you. I didn't know anything at first. Everything looked unusual to me. <laughs> I remember Sephora always called me by, called me a country bumpkin. You didn't feel anxious at all? Surrounded by things you didn't understand? I did when I first left my hometown. But then I got to see a lot of things with my friends, and the feeling went away pretty quickly. If there was anything I didn't know, someone would teach me. Especially Sephora. He knows lots of things, and he'll always inform me when I ask him. I look totally annoyed about it. But Sephora's a nice guy, so he eventually gives in and tells me about it. He's a fucking marshmallow. Seeing Bashalia's mischievous smile, I could picture how Sephora would react when led around by the nose. I have a lot of fun memories now that I've learned so many new things. And no need to worry about the unknown, because there's always someone who can teach you. You're right! Go ask Sephora if there's anything you want to know. But don't bother him too much, okay? He seems busy lately. Oh, that reminds me. There's actually one thing Zavora didn't know. <laughs> it was so funny. Olivis, do you know a board game called Exciting Eshelita? I know chess, but it's my first time hearing of this Exciting Eshelita. Let's play with the others next time. It'll be fun. Okay. Michelle is like, there's one thing he didn't know. How to play a board game. Rady kicked his... No, Vilio. That's true. Vilio popped in. Vilio was the one that popped in and kicked his ass. Anyway, we're going to stop here now because I'm starving. And I know it's, a, it's only like two minutes under time, but like, whatever. I'm hungry. I'd say the bird's tired, but he's always fucking lazy like this. But it's also dark as shit. We're both a little tired. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more. Thank <music> you.